public workshop uh, for the purpose of interviewing and um, asking questions of the candidates for the um, position of the city manager for the city of Lynn Haven. Um, we're going to, um, I've been conferring with our city attorney, Adam Albritton, and we've talked about um, a way um, of the core for the meeting and so what um, he has suggested and I have concurred with as we move along he's been handling this process for us since our uh, acting city manager is, all, is also one of the candidates so what we will do is um, we'll bring each candidate in separately we have a full hour and we're going to ask each candidate to introduce themselves and to say what they'd like to say about themselves in about a five minute introductory period, leaving 25 minutes for each candidate for the commission to ask any questions they may have left and the public to ask any questions of the candidate that they um, would like to address. Um, once a candidate, a candidate does not have to take the entire 30 minutes, if we should have time left at the end, um, after both candidates have had uh, the time allotted, then we would also allow time for more public discussion, not directly addressing the candidates, but if there's just some discussion points, some things that maybe um, you would like to say that you would like to see in our city manager, some things that you would like to expect, those kind of things that the commission and the public may discuss. So um, is there any um, opposition to that format from anyone on the commission? Is everyone good with that format? then uh, we'll go ahead and proceed. I would like to ask your direction. I was thinking that we would just do this in alphabetical order, which would bring um, Commander Brotherton in first and then um, Acting City Manager Gaynor in second. Is that okay with everyone? Because it's alphabetical, I couldn't, or would you rather flip a coin? Um, commission, you're good with alphabetical. Okay, well at this time, um, I would like to call our first applicant then for the position of City of Lynn Haven's manager, and that would be uh, Mr. Greg Brother Brotherton, come on in. Greg. And welcome to this meeting. It's all yours. You can feel free to take it off or adjust it, whatever's comfortable. Thank yeah. you. Uh, first of all, thank you to the Commission and Mayor for uh, allowing me this opportunity to, to interview. Uh, much appreciated. Uh, real quickly about myself. My name is Greg Brotherton. Uh, we chose Lynn Haven. We decided to come back to Lynn Haven because this is the only home that my kids really know. Being um, civically minded for most of my life we have moved around quite a bit we spent the most time here in Lynn, Lynn Haven and are vested in this city um, I started out very young civically minded as I stated uh, with the Cub Scouts doing things we blows and then becoming a volunteer fireman <clears throat> and that led to a 24-year career in the United States Navy as a naval aviator and executive officer I want to continue that service I want to continue to, to serve the public because that's what I feel I need to do I have the blessing of my family. They back me 100% on this. Um, and that's what's needed is someone that is able to take this city forward to the next, to the next uh, phases of reconstruction and, and growth. I come out of the military, <clears throat> which is the most diverse workforce uh, in the world. I feel I have the ability to recognize the differences in people and capitalize on those differences because each person has something different to bring in the, <clears throat> excuse me, to bring and to really help cultivate an innovative workforce. I feel that's what the city of Lynn Haven needs is some innovation. Figure out you had a trial that went uh, that happened a year ago and now it's, come, it's time to rebuild. How do you rebuild? <clears throat> There's a lot to be done. The city has overcome uh, so much in a short amount of time. I feel like I'm the candidate to be able to take this city into the future, into the next two, three years, five, 10, 20 years from now. Uh, I have a vision of the city being uh, the city, the shining city on the bay. It's the place that people, when Tyndall starts filling back up again, they want to come to Lynn Haven because Lynn Haven is safe. It's a family-oriented city, and I want to be a part of that. <laughs> Allergy season. Yes, we're good. We're good. And that's what I have. That's Pam. That's it, Pam. Thank you. I don't think he was finished. I think he was just done. Oh, he is finished. Okay, so that would be the um, conclusion then of the introductory remarks, or did you yeah, have yeah. more? Okay, you had everything you wanted to say. All right. Um, at this time, um, I would like to um, open questions to the commission. And are you comfortable standing there? Are you good with that position? I'm perfect. Okay, just like this. Okay, perfect. Okay, anyone from the commission, if you'd like to ask questions at this point. I sure would, Mayor. Commissioner may. Perno, please go ahead. I just uh, I just interviewed with, with Miss Brotherton and then. I'd just like for 
you to um, um, state um, what we stated in the interview as far as uh, the uh, economic development portion and your strengths as far as what you would bring to Lynn Haven or how you would try to bring industry to our town. Yes, sir. Thank you. I, I look at uh, Panama City, this area being a tech corridor for uh, technology companies to come in. We have, we're surrounded by military bases, Pensacola on the west side, Jacksonville, and several military bases in between. Not just military, but commercial as well. I think tech, technology um, growth, this is the corridor for it. This I-10 corridor, has, this has the opportunity to bring in big businesses, large businesses with a high revenue and high tax base. <clears throat> but that revenue will be able to build up the city and give the amenities back to the citizens uh, that they deserve. Especially after rebuilding, <clears throat> there's many amenities that are still gone by the wayside. To have that revenue come in will bring this be the city into the future. Other questions from the commission? Commissioner Russell. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Mr. Bothington, if you could relate uh, your uh, career history with, as XO with the Navy a sta Air Station in Key West as to how it would relate to work as a city manager. Yes, sir. Uh, so as executive officer of a naval, several installations, I was the executive officer of the Naval Warfare Center here in, Key, uh, in Panama City, as well as the executive officer in Key West. The executive officer is the city manager. An installation is a self-contained um, city in itself. We had an airport. I, we did 100 flight, flight op, 100,000 flight options uh, operations per year. I had my own fire department of 60 to 70 firemen at any time. I had my own police department of 55 service members and, and civilian police officers. We had our own harbor uh, port operations where we bring ships in. In fact, in Key West, our harbor opens up to the city of Key West cruise ships uh, with a <clears throat> an in-kind lease with the city of Key West uh, in order to bring money into the Navy as well. Uh, public Works was one of our biggest departments. So we ran Public Works. We increased the operations in Key West to about tenfold from a, what it was when I first arrived there. And that's even after Hurricane Irma hit us. So we do a disaster preparedness, emergency preparedness, uh, recovery. We did uh, uh, the evacuation of the entire Keys. Um, that was my responsibility to get all of our service members and their families out and get them back safely. And we didn't lose one person that entire time. So I'm proud of that fact. Um, so we're well versed, or I'm well versed in emergency preparation as well as recovery. Thank you. Thank you. Are there other questions from the commission? I just have one. Okay. Um, uh, my question to you, sir, is uh, are you familiar with and have you had to deal with FEMA and things of that nature? Uh, while down at Key West? Yes, ma'am. Uh, we have. So after Hurricane Irma came, the most recent uh, disaster we had to deal with, uh, we had FEMA come in actually ahead of time, knowing that the storm was coming uh, and having a pretty good idea of the track. Touch base with them. So I, I've, I've touched base with federal, state, county, and local officials and worked through them throughout the entire preparation, uh, the sustainment, as well as the recovery of, of Hurricane Irma. FEMA came down, <clears throat> we worked out with them on the installation, because if anyone's ever been to Key West, housing is very difficult to come by. We opened up our base, allowed trailers to come on board. In fact, the uh, Empire State, the FEMA ship, we brought into our port in order to house displaced uh, personnel, not just military, but civilians as well, uh, residents of Key West as they came back into, um, into their, what's left of their homes. Yes, ma'am. Other commissioners? Yes, Mayor. Uh, Mr. Brotherton, I'd like to ask you, you're, you have a, a very good background, I know with, and it's all mainly military background. Do you think that that military background, that training that you've had, those experiences in the past, um, would translate well over into a city government role, um, dealing with citizens as opposed to um, people that are under your charge? Um, like a, like you have on a base. So there are some nuances there with a base in a city. I just want to make sure you feel like that could translate over from military life to civilian life um, without any major hiccups, I guess. Yes, sir, great question. Uh, absolutely. In Key West, for instance, I'll, I'll go back to my mo most recent. We had the largest RV park of any naval installation. Uh, that RV park filled up from October to about mid-April from uh, snowbirds that came down. 
these were not all military. They were uh, varying types of celebrities. We have actually had Tom Berger come visit us, as well as uh, President Trump, as well as Vice President Pence, all come down to visit us in our RV park. So those those folks I dealt with on a daily basis. As, as an exo of the installation, I was essentially the last person they would see. We had a chain of command that we ran through, but they'd always come to see me. My door was always open. Dealing with uh, folks, they're no different if they're in uniform or if they're out of uniform. Everyone has <clears throat> has a voice and they want to say something, and I'm willing to listen. And that's I think that's the, the bridge between that. It's realizing there's no difference in uniform. Some guys put it on to go to, to work, but at the end of the day, we're all human beings. Thank you. Thank you. Are there other questions from the commission? Additional questions? Okay, so at, at this point, then I'm going to uh, move to the public. And if you would, if you have a question um, for Mr. Brotherton, if you would approach the microphone and ask a question, and then um, we'll go from there. Uh, please come on up. Good afternoon, Rich Walker, 1106 Michigan Avenue. Your question is very good. Um, military background has not helped this city in the past, in the 17 years we had. Uh, that didn't go too well for us. We now have a new military man downtown, and he seems to be doing quite well. His transition is good. Your question is good. My problem is this. As a military officer, XO, and with your training, war colleges and et cetera, et cetera, uh, you're in charge of everything. You are the front man. Our city manager here in the adapted form of city manager government we have is in charge of everything. Our mayor is making a plea to try and change that. I have to reiterate the question again. Will you, as a military officer, transcend to civilian life easy as we hope you would? Can you do it? and not be as dictatorial as our few predecessors that we've had? Yes, sir, great question. Uh, short answer, absolutely I can do it. Uh, the way I grew up in, in civic service was, you've heard the term servant leadership. It's one of the reasons I joined the military is I wanted to serve my country and I want to serve my fellow man. I want to some, serve something bigger than myself. Uh, it's the attitude that you have. And you're right, you have toxic leaders wherever you go. I understand that. I'm not a toxic leader. I empower people. The idea is to work it at the lowest level possible, empower the folks to make the decision. My job is to give them the tools in order to do that job. That job is to take care of the citizens of this city. So that's that's how I look at it. I hope that answers the question. Does that answer it? All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are there other questions? I don't have a very clear uh, question in my mind, but um, I, I think I understand from your w wanting to be of civil service um, and continue to do so in your uh, civilian life. I think I understand why you applied for the position and feel competent to do it, to, uh, to uh, do the position. Um, but I understand that at one point you did rescind your, your application and then um, you, you decided to change and come back. So I'd like to hear why you have uh, rescinded your application and what has brought you back. Yes, ma'am. As I thought about this job, um, before when the first the, the advertisement came out and I applied for it, it was, I was applying for it because I was getting ready to transition out of the Navy and I wanted to continue service without taking consideration of, of really my family. For 24 years, I've left my family in the shadows. I, I put myself 100% into my job, and at that time, uh, for so long, as my wife likes to joke, the Navy was my mistress. Uh, and it's unfortunate, and I'm trying to buy that time back. Over the last year, as I got ready to transition, uh, there's been a change. There's been a change that my family's more important than anything. They're here today, they're my strongest advocates, and they're also my, <laughs> my most critical, uh, harshest critic. But so my wife and I prayed about it. And, uh, I felt like I don't, I don't know. I don't know if I want to get in this because I don't want to lose them. 
And I know this job takes a lot of work. I understand it. I did it for 24 years. I understand it. So I prayed about it, and that's when I sent the letter. Didn't let my wife know. I sent the letter in. And, it said, and then the rest of the time, I had this cloud over me. Did I do the right thing? Am I doing the right thing? Am I being selfish? Am I doing? So we prayed about it again. And when she came home, she goes, I back you 100% because I know you can balance your life. I said, all right, then, I'll go and do the interview. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Is, is this your family on the, the back row here? It is right there. My would, son, would you like to son. introduce them to us? And thank, and thank you all for coming today uh, to be here. Thank you. I warned them not to. Because it happened. My son, Josh, who uh, just got accepted to the Navy, my daughter, Joyce, at North Bay Haven, my wife, Eugenia, and my other daughter, Jane, who is a Bozeman buck as well. Welcome, all of you. Congratulations to you as well. Do we have an, another question? Go ahead. It's very good. So the joke in Key West is the Navy and Key West are married, because they are. Key West brings in $1 billion to the economic engine of Monroe County. We are tightly integrated within the city and the county. Diversity down in Key West, uh, we talk LGBT, uh, whatever the diversity is, it is the most diverse city I think I've ever been in. And uh, we've been all over the world, all over the states and all over the world. Uh, that relationship was so good that we, we actually, in Veterans Day parades, when we have those, we have full support of everyone in the city. They ask us to, the Navy, to come to every uh, Christmas parade they have, and if you've ever been to Key West, they have parades starting in October until April. And the Navy's invited to every one of them because of that close relationship. Thank you. Are there other questions from the public? I don't see anyone else that has a question. Commission, anything else? Um, you have a few um, minutes. Uh, would you like to make a closing statement, Mr. Brotherton, or are you, are you pretty well done? Uh, just thank you. Again, thank you all for the opportunity to come here. Um, thank you all for showing up. It shows me that there is high-level interest in what goes on in the city. And I feel that uh, if I'm chosen as this, I can take this city with your trust into the next, uh, the next, the future steps as this city grows. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for your time. Yes, you may. That, that was my other question, was um, we, the, we've had a lot of problems in the city, and a lot of this, I think, started distrust of the, of the, of the government. And um, I wonder how you're going to address that with the citizens and then also with the staff. Great Thank question. You. Thank you. Okay. Um, I was talking to Mr. Albrighton earlier. Uh, as the XO, what I always did is I keep a lawyer on one side and I keep my PR person on the other side. I want to make sure doing everything ethically right. I run it through the lawyer, and when I want to get the message out, I go to the, to the public affairs or PR person. Uh, what I've mentioned to all the commissioners and the mayor is when I interviewed this morning was I didn't look and re uh, research Lynn Haven. I have friends here. When we came back, I heard some things were going on. When I applied for the job, I looked into it. In fact, I had friends telling me, you sure you want to do that? When I was notified that you made the finalist, I didn't research anything on Lynn Haven. I want to be able to come in from the outside and take with clear eyes and take a look at what's going on and understand you don't come in within one day and start making changes. You sit back about 90 days is what I normally do. And you look and you observe and you see how things are operating. Are there fixes here that we can improve on? Or is this something that we're, we probably shouldn't be doing? Is this something we should be doing? But that's, that's how I approach it. Thank you again. Thank you very much. Anyone else? We've still got a minute or two if there were other questions. Okay, I think we're good. Thank you so much. If you would like to invite Ms. Gaynor in at this time.
And our um, second applicant for the position is our acting city manager, Ms. Vicki Gaynor, and she'll have the same um, five minute introduction. And then uh, we'll open it for questions to the commission. And then after that, questions to the public as we just did. Thank you, Ms. Gaynor, the floor is yours. Thank you and thank you for, for allowing me this opportunity. My name is Vicki Gaynor. Yes, I have been the acting city manager now for almost nine months. I came from the private sector. A lot of my background has been strategic planning, um, marketing, PR, business development. But I came here two and a half years ago. And I came as the grants contracts manager wanting to help this city. And that was my mission. I see myself as being a servant leader, very strategically focused. And that is what I want us to be here and to serve the citizens of Lynn Haven. Two and a half years ago when I came, there were lots of things going on. The city was growing and it was going in a great direction. And then we had a couple of bumps in the road. And so I was offered to be the deputy city clerk. I became the definite deputy city clerk. Then another thing happened. Offered to be the HR director. I was the HR director, along with being the deputy city clerk. Then another thing happened. So I became the HR director, the deputy city clerk, the grants manager, the contracts manager, and anything else needed to be done at this city. Why? It's because I feel like in order to be a part of any organization, you got to do anything you need to do to help your city move forward. And that means, if it means taking three or four jobs, that's what you do. Because that's who we are as servants. This is a servant's job. There's not a whole bunch of glamour about it. It is all about serving and meeting the needs of the citizens. And so that's where I am now. Nine months ago, when you asked me to take on as acting city manager, I took it in a very, very, um, very difficult time. But I knew that I could also do this job. So yes, when I took it on, was, were the finances low? Yes, they were. Was the morale low? Yes, it was. Were we moving in a direction that I felt like was not the, quite the direction we should be moving in? Yes, I did. Have we not gotten any FEMA reimbursements? No, we had not. Had recovery and rebuild started? No, it had not. But in nine months, I have turned things around. Morale is high. We have a budget now that we can be proud of. We've gotten $4.9 million in reimbursement and 12 million is in the chute that we were waiting on. At some point it will come through. We have also been very successful at hiring good people. We have also been very successful at looking at our technology and saying technology has to be improved. That has been my entire focus, one of them, since I've been here. You cannot run a city with the 1986 Vega. It has to be ran with a 2019 luxury car. And that's the way I feel about how technology needs to run. Uh, we are in a process now. We have the opportunity to make sure that uh, employees have the opportunity to do their jobs well that we can track what we do. We can have internal controls in place. Were internal controls in place when I came on board? No, they were not. The budget manager was, was hired to do just that, to make sure that there were internal controls in place and there are contour, internal controls in place. How have we been able to come back and bounce back in our finances, FEMA reimbursements, uh, we had another grant, a ditch, a ditch cleaning grant. Uh, one of the things I love now is knowing that residents don't have to lay their heads down at night thinking, will I flood? Will I not flood? They won't flood. We're, but we're not finished with storm war yet. That's just the beginning. Uh, have we applied for other grants? Yes, we have. 
Uh, do we have a $30 million bond loan that we closed on and we were able to, to pay debris haulers? Yes, we have. So is the city moving in the not right direction? Yes. I told you a couple of months ago by December that the roofs would be on, we would be in the rebuild process. Are we in the rebuild process? Yes, we are. Roofs are on, garden, uh, garden center is being redone, bids are out for RFQ for the recovery. Uh, King Griffin Park is getting ready to have a new facelift. The city is moving forward. Time is of essence. We don't have time to sit around and decide what we're going to do. Decisions need to be made. They sometimes have to be made quickly. I'm that person that makes those decisions quickly when need to be. Because being in the marketing and communications world, you have to be a critical thinker. You have to think of every outcome. And then you have to be able to address every outcome, no matter what it is. That's just the training that you get in PR and you get in community relations and you get in all of those areas. One thing I am most proud of is that when I came here and I moved here from Alabama, was the, I, I didn't have too much of a foothold in terms of uh, community involvement and relationships, but that's one of my strong suits and I wanted to build that. So have I built community relationships over the past 30 years? Yes, I have. I have built Ms. them. Gaynor, I'm sorry, but the five minutes is okay. up. And so you can build those into your questions yes. if you don't mind. Okay. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Are there questions from the commission that you would like to address to Ms. Gaynor? Anyone? Since I interrupted what you were saying, I would like to ask the question, could you give us some examples of your community involvement? Sure. I've served on a several in my 30 years I probably served on about 15 boards and I don't serve on those boards because they are on my resume I serve on those boards because it goes back to being who you are are you a servant leader do you want to see your community succeed and that's what you do when you want to see your community succeed I uh, served on a couple other boards where uh, I've helped with children and and uh, head start and uh, the chamber, I have built those relationships over the years. It does not come overnight. So right now, can I call any community leader that I know on a county level, on a legislative le level, even in Washington and ask for help? Yes, I can do that because those are relationships that I've built. Do I know about FEMA, how FEMA works, what to do to make sure that we get the money we deserve Yes, I do. Because when we came, when I came in, the, the ball was moving pretty slow. And so we had to do a lot of fast moving to say, look, we will not take this as an answer. We want to know where our money is and we want it now. And we were able to get that money. So I think with the relationships that I have built over the past couple of years, I think that this will help spring forward city of Lynn Haven because you're going to need that. We are not an island. We are part of a great community, and we have to act like we're part of that great community. We have to utilize every resource we can to move forward. And, and for the rebuild and recovery of this time, we're going to need all those relationships to make it work. Thank you. Are there other comments or questions from the commission before I move to the public? Fair Commissioner enough. Russell? Ms. Gaynor, um, the last nine months that you've been acting city manager, what would you say is the hardest part of your job? And what would you say are your strongest attributes to, to be able to handle that job? The hardest part of my job is to, to making sure that what we do is best for the city of Lynn Haven. And in order to make those type of uh, decisions, you have to first think about your strengths. I'm adaptable. Surely, just from the, the things I've done in the past two years, it has helped me to adapt to whatever situation I've been put in. I'm flexible. Flexibility, if you, many of you have seen my signature, 
flexible people don't get bent out of shape. And so you have to be that person who is flexible because sometimes people are not going to agree with your decision. Um, when you make a decision, there will be 20 people that said you made the great decision and there will be 20 more that said you didn't make the good decision. So you have to know, um, you have to be strong in your decision you make and stick with it. Thank you. Are there other questions from the commission? Yes, I, I do Go have ahead, one, Mayor, if I may. Um, Ms. Vicki, this, this, this one's kind of uncomfortable for, for me and everybody else, but I, I have had citizens come up and ask me this question, and I represent the citizens, so I have to relay this. Um, without passing judgment, without saying anything, on my opinion, we know there were some news stories that came out a few weeks ago, and we knew there were some names thrown around. Do you feel like we have learned from this situation do you feel like there have been parameters put in place to prevent these issues from happening and what is your overall impression of that situation an example something that we learned from and move on something that should never happen something that and this isn't a trick question i just want to know kind of where you're standing no, on and it, and it shouldn't be yes we if we don't learn from our mistakes then we will be back at the same place we were before so yes, there were a couple of news stories that came out inaccurate, but you must always have the right information to show that they're inaccurate. That's the first thing that you do. And you second must have uh, uh, the knowledge to know why you made a decision. And thirdly, if it by chance is somewhat accurate, then you may make sure that you put in controls that it does not happen again. One of those controls that we have is that we have a budget manager in place, a budget manager that we did not have before. And that budget manager, it is her job to make sure that when someone brings a PO, that she looks inside of their budget and say, yes, you have enough money. No, you don't have enough money. You need to either go back and find it or you need to ask for a transfer. No check is written with just one signature on a PO. It has to have the department head signature, the budget manager signature, and the city manager signature. And that is if you have the money in the bank. Another control that has been put into place. When I came to the city and it's still here, but we are working through, and this is part of that technology that I'm talking about, is that even right now, when you write a check, checks are written out of general fund, okay? And then we depend on finance to transfer those, that money back to where it should be. If we wrote it out of general fund and we have a restoration account, then we uh, depend on finance to transfer that money where it should be. One of the things that I've implemented and working with our software and our budget manager is working on is that when a check is written, it comes out of that fund. So if it's written out of the insurance fund, it comes out of the insurance fund. If it's the money comes out of bond fund, it if that money real time, well, you can show and track it and see where it comes out of bond fund. So if nothing else, we need to realize that we don't need to have all our our eggs in one basket. We have now an insurance fund that can only be used for recovery. So nothing else can come out of that insurance money. We have bond fund that yes, bond money that we can use, but there are some controls in place with that as well. When it's over a certain amount, I have to have approval by the mayor. I have to, I also have to approve it. And then the mayor and I have decided if it's over another amount, we bring it to the commission so that the commission knows and it is in the record that we all know about it. Thank you. Are there other questions or comments from the commission from Ms. Yes, Gaynor? Mayor. Go ahead, please. Um, Ms. Gaynor, sorry for my back, but um, what, is, what is the amount where you decide out of the funds and what is the amount that you and the mayor decide? Okay, so in the purchasing policy, it said anything over $35,000 has to go out for bid. But there are situations where the commission approves it, 
For instance, here's a great example. We have done the bid for the roofs. You have already approved $371,000. You've approved that we pay that vendor. So when $81,000 of their first draw is asked for, I already have permission from you to do that. So that money is written to pay them so that we continue the process. So it really depends if it's something new we've never done before and it's over $35,000, it goes out to bid. If it's something you've approved, you've approved in the budget, then that, that can be written uh, at, that check can be written at any time. Other questions from the commission? Okay, at this time, um, then I would like to turn the questions to the public. If anyone in the uh, audience has a question you'd like to ask of Ms. Gaynor, please approach the microphone. Sure, go ahead. I would like to ask, um, with uh, distrust of the civilian population, the voters of the city, and um, also um, unrest in the, with the, or perhaps uh, confusion and unrest with the, with the uh, uh, staff, how are you going to address um, making this a community again? That's a great question. You have to lead by example, first of all. You have to be that person that's out there in the community. You have to be that person, first of all, that is very transparent. I've been very transparent. I think in that that's very, very true that I've given you everything. I put everything out there for you to see. Anytime a citizen wants to meet with me and go over any of the books, go over anything inside, they are welcome to do that. I meet with citizens every single day. I don't leave that to chance because they're the reason I have this job. It has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with the citizens of Lynn Haven. And so I can cont you continue to build that trust. These events that I'm, you see me at every event, I'm out there because pe I want people, first of all, to know I'm a person, I'm human, I have feelings just like everyone else, but I care about this community and I care about what happens to it. So you build trust by doing little things, by putting in internal controls that were not there before, that by being very honest with them about what it is that you are doing um, and nothing been being done on the dark side. I, th I think that's the most important thing and people respect you for that. One of the things that I pride myself on is my integrity, my honest and being honest and trying to make sure that everybody knows what I'm doing. Staff will tell you um, that if it's policy driven just today, the staff asked me about something and I said, it is in our policy that we do this. And we won't break from that policy unless it is an emergency as stated in the policy. That is the way that you run a city. There will be times that I will have to bring some situations to the commission that yes, they may be policy driven, either two things needs to happen and this is where the commission is in charge. They can change the way we do things by adopting an ordinance or they will say we will give leeway this time. But I think that you have to bring things before the commission and you have to let the folks of Lynn Haven know what you're doing. One of the great things that we're doing now is that we changed our billing, the way it looks on the bill cycle itself. And so now you will know, citizens will know when every commission meeting is. They will know when community services meeting. They'll know when beautification meetings are. They'll know what's going on in the city. You just have to communicate with them. And I think that's the bottom line of it. Did I answer your question? Thank you. Are there other questions from the audience? Anyone else? It doesn't appear that there are any other questions. Any more from the board? Okay. At this point, um, then if you'd like to make your closing remarks, Ms. Gaynor, we'll be done. Thank you. I, as I said at the beginning, I am a servant leader. 
And that means that we serve our citizens. Citizens have to be first in the decisions that we make. We have to know that we are doing it for the best, what's best for the city of Lynn Haven. I have a desire to, to move this city forward. I have so many visions that the Lord has given me along with so many of you that I've talked to and say, have you thought about this? Um, can we do this? And there's so many things that I know that we can build together, um, that we will rebuild. It will take us uh, maybe a year and a half to, but once it is over, I guarantee you, and I keep saying this, the city of Lynn Haven will be the premier city in Bay County. Thank you so much. We appreciate your time and preparing for the interview. At this time, we have about a little over 15 minutes left, and we will be conducting a special meeting this Friday uh, that is um, in the morning at 10 a.m. Friday morning, and at that time, the commission will make their selection. If um, at this time, if there's something that um, the commissioners would like to um, say to each other or you know, questions that we can't talk anywhere else <laughs> about this. So this is an opportunity if you want to have any further discussion about this selection. Um, and then if the commission has no further comments, then I would open it once again to the public. If you have something that you'd like to say to the commission regarding their selection of one or the other of the candidates, if you have anything you'd like to say on behalf of one of the candidates, you'll be welcome to do that. So I'll give it first to the commission. You know, yes, Mayor. Go I, ahead, I, I would like Commissioner Aldridge. Actually, because this is a this is a big deal. I mean, this is a big process. Um, we've got two people that have built their lives um, on top of their careers and working hard to attain where they are, and I acknowledge that. Um, so, from my standpoint, I first off want to say I believe that both candidates um, are are good candidates that applied for this job. I don't, you know, I, I don't necessarily think that. Um, well, I'll leave that alone. Both are very good candidates. Um, and, and, and I want to say thank you um, to the families um, that showed up, to the people that came out and are supporting their, uh, their family members. And I want to thank the candidates for, for coming out and actually, you know, realizing this is a very difficult time that we're in. Um, it's a lot different applying for a job. And I think we all should remember this. It's all different, uh, way different to apply for a job in a city that's well put together and, and working like a well-oiled machine. Um, we went through a nuclear blast a year ago, so rebuilding this is is a um, momentous task. So I, I'm thankful that there are people that are still willing to serve, and I'm thankful to the candidates, and I'm thankful to the citizens and the families that have come out for this process because it is that important for our future. So thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Aldridge. Anyone else on the commission have anything you'd like to say? Okay, it appears not. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to say something on either behalf of one of the candidates or just make a statement about city manager in general, what your expectations are, anything of that nature? Staff, and we have a lot of staff directors here. Anybody from the staff? My name is Stephen Finger. I'm a police officer. I'm a police officer for the city of Lynn Haven. Um, I love Miss Gaynor to death. Um, she's tried and true and proven. She's already doing the job. Um, we know that she's going to continue to do 110%. Uh, there's no learning curve. We have to wait on. She's already doing it. And I, I speak on behalf of myself and a lot of other people. We would love to uh, keep Miss Gaynor in her position. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Anyone else? Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Miller. Yes, uh, you know, <clears throat> when Michael first hit, they kind of made this uh, uh, motto, eight steps too strong. This is what we have to do. We have to look at each other and make this here a strong thing in Lynn Haven because we are still struggling. And we're going to be struggling for the next five years with Michael. And there's no sense in us planning. We have to be eight steps strong together in our decision. Thank you, Mr. Miller. 
Anyone else? Okay. Um, look up. Go ahead. Yes, please go ahead. Would do you mind? Um, we're we're a live broadcast, and so that way it brings everybody forward. So I am Greg Brotherton's wife. Um, we have spent time all over the world. The one place we wanted to come back to is Lynn Haven. It really is our home. So regardless of whether or not you have the wisdom to hire my husband, who is hardwired to do this job, we are just thrilled to be back here. We are glad to be part of this community. Mr. Miller, you are absolutely correct. So thank you very much for your consideration of it. Thank you so much for coming today. Thank you for his service. And, and a lot of times what people don't realize is that when one member of the family serves, the whole family serves. So thank you all so much for your service. Anyone else? Okay, it looks like we've reached the end then a public comment. I have left anyone out, right? Okay, um, we have about uh, 10 minutes until our regular commission meeting begins at four and I would declare this workshop uh, adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>